I'm David Pogue, and this is John Chen, CEO of BlackBerry. This is a Yahoo Tech Mix, where I uh, get to interview prominent CEOs of tech companies and in an informal and relaxed way and grill them mercilessly. <laughs> um, let me introduce you to John in video form. We have a quick uh, history of his life. He's been called a fixer, an outsider, and a high-speed golfer. He's the new CEO of BlackBerry, the company whose smartphones were the one to beat for a while. So addictive, they earned the name CrackBerry. But that was before the rise of the iPhone and the Android. Even the Windows phone has overtaken BlackBerry. Today, they're only cool in a retro sort of way. But John Chen is the man whose magic touch saved software company Sybase from what the media called almost certain death and turned it into a nearly $6 billion company. He's attempting to repeat that magic at BlackBerry, and by most accounts, he's succeeding. Chen immigrated from Hong Kong to the United States as a teenager to attend a New England prep school and then Brown University. His management goals include restoring confidence and refocusing a business on what works. He calls it Common Sense 101. The BlackBerry is not dead yet, despite dire predictions. Instead, it's returning to its iconic roots with a new classic and innovating at the same time with the passport. Despite what some critics charge, Chen says he's not crazy for coming out of retirement to save BlackBerry. He gave himself six quarters to turn the company around, but as Chen himself has been quoted, the first try does not have to be the last. We do. <laughs> thank you, thank you, it's great. <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you for joining us. This is, uh, I, I love this story because you will be judged on one thing and one thing only, whether you pull it off, right? You're not, you don't have the luxury of a thriving company where you can, you can try new experiments and spend, that you have to fix it or not. Yeah, um, that's, that's what makes it interesting. <laughs> So, so just to be clear, um, so BlackBerry, you know, in, in 2008, a stock price of $150, now it's 10. Uh, BlackBerry was the smartphone. That's where the word smartphone came out. And now in the United States, it's, what, 2% of the market? Yeah. And, and I can say that, and it doesn't make you squirm? Well, um, I mean, I don't know whether I sh how I should feel about it, but, but I, I think... Um, uh, um, this is where the opportunity comes from. I, um, if uh, I, I don't want to parallel or use one of the you know my competitors' uh, history, but um, I actually recall in 1997, you know, everybody thought Apple was going to go away as a company. Mm -hmm. And um, I think a couple of years back or last year, Apple was the largest market cap company in the world. Um, I think it's all about the technology market. You know, yes, a lot of people failed in, in terms of trying to turn around, but also a lot of a lot of company was successful in in kind of reinvent itself. Um, and it has to come from innovations, and it has to come from you, you know the talk about common sense, but what the market really needs. Um, and and you don't want to go too broad. You don't want to go uh, you know too too um, you know too crazy about things. But you know you you add value to the market. Market will reward you. So. I'm not, I'm not overly concerned. Um, I want to make sure that we do have a plan. Um, I want to make sure that we are on solid footing financially so that we buy ourselves enough time to execute that plan. And those are the things that, that, that's more concern me more. Um, you're, you're, you and your PR staff have both indicated that you are not controllable, that I can ask you anything, yes. that you are not being constricted to say certain things, which is delicious. Um, so you are not responsible for BlackBerry's fall, of course. You, you, so sh shouldn't you be able to comment on what the mistakes were? I mean, was any of this avoidable, or was it just here came Apple and too bad, and no one could have saved it? Well, I, I wouldn't, I mean, we uh, somewhat of a disrespect uh, just to comment on what went wrong uh, in the company. And, you know, obviously the founder of the company and the prior management teams have done a lot, a lot of great stuff. Uh, like you pointed out, at one point in time, I think the company's worth $85 billion. So I, I wouldn't, and therefore, it's all a mistake. I think every company, and, and you look at all the history of companies, uh, whether it's uh, HP and GE and IBM and you know, Dell and every company, they, they achieve really high level of success. Uh, they've done a lot of right things. 
Um, but embedded in a lot of the right thing is also, you know, the, the pace of change um, and the reaction to the market um, are also, you know, being hampered, maybe that's just the right word. And so when things turn the other way, it goes down very quickly. Uh, and so that's not, that's not uncommon. Um, only problem in a tech industry is that the only way to get out of it, it has to be an innovation, um, you know, because old stuff have no margins. Um, so, uh, so I'm all focused on learning. I, I, did, I did learn, spend a lot of time learning what we have done wrong to get to that point, mm -hmm. only not to use that as an excuse or criticize others. It's only as that as say, okay, now how do I fix that? Um, and and what, what is an opportunity to fix it? And also, everything that's done wrong in the past may not necessarily need to be fixed hmm. uh, because time has changed. Mm -hmm. you know, what's important then it's no longer important now, uh, for example. And, and um, so it's a long list of things, obviously, but, um, but that's my attitude about it. Okay, so how will you fix it? Can you summarize the Chen philosophy? Well, um, the first thing first, uh, you know, when I came in, um, now about 14 months now, um, uh, we were losing money in a very big way. Um, I think we have a little bit of um, trouble in dealing with what's really real in front of us. Um, a lot of us think that, you know, it just another great phone will do it. Mm. Um, this kind of like, this is going to be temporary and we're going to wake up any moment now and everything will be fine. Um, and I think those fundamentals are, you know, needs to be revisited and we revisited those. And more importantly, um, how, do you, how do you, what is the future? And so, so assume that I could fix it on a financial basis. Um, you know, we stop bleeding cash. We, in fact, are generating cash now nice. for the first time last quarter. Well um, done, sir. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, and, and then, we, and then we, you know, we need to focus on you know, making money. Um, the making money part needs to come from growth because all the low-hanging fruit of cutting expenses are pretty much done. You can't cut yourself to glory. I don't believe that. <laughs> so the question is, what everything you do, how does that contribute to the future? Mm -hmm. um, and today is actually a very good day, because this morning um, we talk about the IoT strategy. Everybody talk about IoT strategy. Internet, nobody Internet nobody doesn't, yeah, I'm sorry, Internet of Things. He warned me not to <laughs> use uh, non-English. <laughs> uh, yeah, Internet of Things. So uh, there's a question is, you can't just say, I'm in the Internet of Things. Everybody's in the Internet of Things. Everybody's in the cloud. Everybody's in data analytics. Everybody's in the big data, whatever they call it. Then everybody's in mobile computing. I mean, you could read it, like, generically. Yeah. Um, right? um, so, so we focus on security and privacy. We focus on connecting billions, if not trillions, of devices um, and managing those securely. See, this is where the so, cons this consumer so, might get lost. So wait, okay. billions and trillions of devices, you're talking about Blackberries? Uh, no. No, it's you guys about are way beyond. Way beyond. Yeah. Um, and so let me come back to your original question so I can come back. Uh, okay. so I, sorry for the digression. No, this no. is part of my uncontrollable. <laughs> I enjoyed I mean, the they can They can control me, neither could you. <laughs> so, uh, and... Um, but uh, but, but uh, so, so the, the thing that we, are, we went out to do is to say, okay, what are the businesses, what are the technology that could contribute to a future common vision? But in the meantime, when I first started, I kind of focused on breaking the company into four operating units. The device business, the messaging business, the server business, um, and the embedded business. The QNX, the people may or may not know the brand. So, and the reason we did that um, was to make sure that we have business priority focus. For example, the device business, forget about selling millions more than Apple iPhone. Forget about that. Just focus on making money. Because we were, we were actually subsidizing every phone we sold them. Mm. Uh, and thank goodness, the last two quarter, we turned a profit margin, positive margin and profitable for the device business. So, so the BlackBerry phones are now make a money. profitable business? Yes. The BlackBerry phone has a, uh, we make money every phone we sell. How's that? Wow. That's, in there, there's a lot of moving parts. 
yeah. how we manufacture, who we manufacture, who, how we manage the logistic, the, the, the repair, the warranty, the services, the IP costs, you know, this thing just go, and then of course the distribution costs, where do you put the phone in AT&T, and what kind of deal you do with them, or, or do I, you know, other, other distributors of the world, like Brightstar and uh, Ingram Micro and so forth, we have to pull back and look at the entire pictures of all the contracts. And, and I made these statements at earnings call. Uh, most people, you know, either eyes glaze over or they think these are excuses right, of the revenue dropping. But we literally have to walk away from revenue that actually costs us money. Hmm. So, 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 so it's really more profound. And how many phones do you build? What kind of parts do you build it with? These are all details. Everybody doesn't focus on the details, but it, it, we did a really good job. The team did a fantastic job. We released four phones um, last year, um, in the last 12 months. Every phone right now, every phone we sell right now, we make money. Some we make very little, <laughs> intentionally, hmm. because we want to go back into the you know, base like the Indonesia of the world and so forth. We, we cut the price very low, but we managed the cost structure. Um, very high. So, right, so that's devices, a phone business. Right? Yeah. That's a phone business. And then, then you have the server business. So one of the things that we have done wrong, I, I think, um, in the past was our server um, was pretty much the market leader everywhere. I mean, if you go back five years ago, every company that uses a BlackBerry uses a BlackBerry server. That's how you get email. Two things happened there. Well, the BYOD, or the bring your own device movement came in, and everybody started bringing in iPhone and, and uh, Android phones and so forth, and Windows phones and so forth. Well, our server was not designed to manage those. Oh. So unless we sell our phones in a very broad way, uh, people adopt our phones, then they started to turn off our server. Mm. But. Sony just turned it back on, so, so you had that. Uh, 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 uncontrollable. Uh, uh, okay, I'm going to piss Sony off. Uh, but, uh, is that a joke or is it true? No, it's not. A, it's, 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 it's true. Oh. Uh, uh, you guys go research that. Uh, and anyway, back to, but so we just announced in November the new server called the Best 12, BlackBerry Enterprise Server 12, version 12 is designed to agnostically manage everything, including the Samsung Knox device, which we made the announcement together uh, in November in San Francisco. So um, you could see that, I'll, I'll come back to, through this conversation, I'll come back to why that's important. And then of course the messaging. The, the BBM messaging used to be BlackBerry, BlackBerry device. Um, as the BlackBerry device numbers start going down, our BBM numbers went down, went, is going down, well, went down with it, right? Mm -hmm. um, but about a year and a half ago, this is before my time, uh, the decision was made to open it up to, and put BBM on every device. So now you could download on iTunes and Google Play and all that. And now all of a sudden our base now went up to over 90 million MAU. So that was a good decision. That was a good thing. Yeah. So we're going to continue to expand that. The question then becomes, how do you make money there? You know, I'm, I'm not WhatsApp or whatever belongs to big banks. and. Uh, <laughs> I'm, uh, you know, I got to make money out of that. that, 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 that. So that we have two ways to do that. So that's another focus area. And we, we talk about the roadmap today, this morning. And then the last is not, but not least, is the whole connected car. We own a company called QNX, which is early on the connected cars. Uh, yesterday we announced, or the day before we announced, um, there are 50 million cars that uses our device, uh, our software, F five zero. 50 million cars yeah. with QNX in them already? Yes. And, but people don't even know that. You're driving, exactly. you don't even know it. Yeah. Wow. Uh, um, right. And what does this software do in a car? Started with infotainment, telematics, now into the control system and safety, connection with the cloud, we have the true definition of your connected car. Wow. So now, um, it's because it's a microkernel and stuff, but this are not English, but it just believe me, it's the most secure implementations of uh, of software. Which is basically. good because what a lot of us have heard about car software is that it's scarily insecure, right? Yes. So this is a very good thing for a company like BlackBerry with a security reputation to come in. And, right, exactly. Yeah. So, so what, what, what we have decided to do, the, the future strategy is all rely on security and privacy. We think it's important to people somehow. <laughs> a year ago, 
Uh, and this might, you know, I mean, it's not, a, it's not meant to be a, some of, you know, it's not meant to be a joke. A year ago, I couldn't get my teenage daughter to use our phone because it's the most secure phone. That's like her eyes glazed over or anything. Whatever, you know, she wants to do Instagram. Mm -hmm. We couldn't get no Instagram at that time. So that's, <laughs> that's no good. I mean, you know, I can't pay her to use it, right? <laughs> now you could do Instagram because we got other stuff. Out. But anyway, um, I kept stressing security and privacy. Uh, but over the year, a lot of things happened in the industry. Um, and even yesterday, I think the FTC, I made a mistake this morning and told people it's FCC, it's <laughs> FTC. The FTC chairperson, chairwoman, I made a speech here, I think, um, regarding the importance of IoT, the Internet of Things. The connectivity needs to be secure and private. And the government needs to accept policy to that, which is scary, by the way. Government shouldn't accept <laughs> do any, well, that's a different issue. You know, we could go into net neutrality if you want to talk about that. But, <laughs> but anyway, back to this. So, so if you look at the four pillar of what we're doing, people thought that I'm splitting the company into four pieces in, in a, a year ago. Actually, each of them have different mission in life. The embedded people needs to get into everything, including medical devices. That's what the car, beyond cars are the homes, are the medical fields, are SS tracking, managing of trucks and ships and planes and everything, right? Those are so-called the internet or all things. Uh, the messaging needs to get into a, a secure embedded messaging technology between you and I privately as a private conversation. Not even just the enterprise, it's just individuals. I mean, so it's a big step towards secure and private. Um, and then we're focusing a lot on that. All right? well, it's not so much as consumer versus enterprise, but it's secure and private. We want our messaging uh, technology to be the most secure and private, because we figure that you're gonna run on these transport that are not secure and private, because it runs on every, everybody devices, mm -hmm. right? And, and, and then, of course, our server that manages everything is really managed to, uh, designed to manage many, many endpoints, not just phones. So the four divisions, uh, phones, servers, messaging, cars, which one is the Internet of Things? That's, well, that's the this morning we talk about, it's actually everything. So um, this morning we have a medical application that we, we announced, um, which is a health box in your home that connects all your fitness uh, bracelet, your wearables, your, if you have any uh, medical device on you, um, uh, and it connects to blood pressure machines and all that, um, wireless, on the Wi-Fi, on your home Wi-Fi basis. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that is using BlackBerry Messenger, a uh, secure transport. And when it goes out of your home to the doctors or to you know, the hospitals or whoever it needs to go or the next of kin or whatever it might be, um, it, it's over our server, our secure server, the BlackBerry Enterprise server. So the devices, we will build more and more medical devices and our partner will too. So if you could see it, that is everything is connected um, and, and we're now coming out would say, okay, these four business units, so to speak, are really not business units. They are four pillars of the IoT I see. Uh, platform. I know it's took me a long time to explain that, um, but over time, people will understand our differentiation because we're starting to see application in the medical world, in the SS tracking world, in, of course, the car world. So but much of what you said, I think, would come as a surprise to the average middle American who's not a technologist, who thinks of BlackBerry as a phone. But most of what you just discussed is not phone. Right. So how much of the company is phone, and how much is everything else? Today, the uh, revenue is still very dominated by phones. Um, I would say about 75 80% of our revenues are phone-based revenues. Hmm. Um, and the rest of them are software and services-based, we should talk about. Um, so I'm hoping to change that equation uh, not, not by shrinking the phone, by, <laughs> because that was always a conversation of denominator and numerator, so. <laughs> right. But, I mean, you, you have never run a hardware company, right? I ran a hardware company. Oh, I started as an hardware engineer. Oh, okay. So you started, all right. So, but, but the. Um, that's another surprise, right? But there are people, what's that? That's another surprise. Yeah, that's another yeah. surprise. I thought Sybase, Sybase, Sybase. Side, side right. Um, but, but the Sybase project, was that was not a hardware company, right? Okay. okay. So um, I've heard it said, well, you know, John Chen is trying to Sybase BlackBerry, right? right? He's trying to apply strategies of a software company to a hardware company. Is that, 
is that accurate, or, 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 and, or and does it make sense? Well, I think uh, from a business business fundamental point of view, um, I, I don't know what Sybase in a company is. Um, <laughs> when I when I ran Sybase, um, it was worth about three four hundred million in market cap. Everybody thought it was completely gone. In fact, I remember I, the, the thing I didn't do was to keep a copy. I remember Force magazine at the time had one you know page, only one page in, in, embedded inside a, a magazine, had my picture on it and said, somebody tell this guy that, you know, software turnaround is very, very difficult, near impossible. Um, it, was, it was true, it was very, very hard, but not impossible. So it um, uh, took me 13 years, but 13 years later, we sold the company at 5.8 billion. Wow. And so, you know, if, if I could, give my shareholder a 20 times return of BlackBerry stock, uh, I would love to cybatize everything. <laughs> and and that, that could be a Wikipedia term or a dictionary <laughs> term. You know, somebody cybatize things would be great. It's like 20 times over. You heard it here return, first, folks. Right? Yeah. But it's, it's going to take a, probably after I died. <laughs> so you, you mentioned how you made the, the phone division uh, profitable again. Uh, and you said it was a whole bunch of little fine-tuning tweaks along the way. It sounds like uh, the sort of Tim Cook thing, you know, be, be, look at the mechanics and the inventory and the parts and the chain and all that stuff. Um, but you're, you have an engineering background, right? Right. So how did you go from engineering physical things, laws of physics, into laws of business and studying supply chains and all that kind of thing? Well, some of them I experienced. I mean, one of my, uh, but first of all, Engineers are real people. <laughs> so when people ask me that question, it's like, like other than technology, like bits and bytes and wearing a propeller hat, uh, we don't know anything that is common sense. But it is common sense. <laughs> right? uh, and um, so engineer had one advantage. I mean, on a serious note, uh, we always like to understand the cause and effect. You know, what, what's the reason of being? And, and you know, if you look at it that analytical and not and not emotional, not like I have a vision, right? Uh, if you just look at it analytically, then you understand fundamentally. The first task is, how do I make money and where do I invest? I mean, this is a very simple, everybody does that. I don't care which discipline you came from. Uh, that's what you do when you run a company. So, um, I, I did learn supply chain management and MRP uh, when I worked for a company called Burroughs. A mainframe company. Is, is, if you know about this company, you're too old. Um, <laughs> I've heard of uh, and, and I learned that, and I did design micro electronics chipsets. I wrote micro code. Um, I ran business units, went into marketing for opening up the Unix market for Unisys in Japan, which was all workstation based at the time, uh, was all Sun Microsystems based. and. And we introduced Unix servers into the business world. So I have done a number of things, fortunately. Um, so some of them are experience. Some, a lot of them are common sense. Hmm. And yet, you are the latest, let's face it, in the number of, of a number of CEOs of this company. Not that there's anything wrong with a company who's had a string of CEOs. Um, <laughs> and, and nobody before you thought that it was common sense. I mean, why couldn't someone before you fix these problems? Well, um, as I said, that's a very hard thing to comment on. Well, first of all, we have a co-CEO who are co-founder um, that literally uh, transformed. You remember the old room pager and went into smartphone, just transformed the whole communication field. So I think those, you, could, you have to check mark it as major success. How it ended, maybe not as glamorous as it started, but a company was, a strong Canadian icon, iconic company was built. Um, the former CEO may have been in the company um, too long um, because I think uh, you know, he focused on, hey, we, we could just keep doing the phone business. And maybe it was right, but time was running out. Uh, on, the, on, the, on, the, um, um, on the industry side, uh, it, the competition was a little different. The mathematics behind the phone business were different. You know, it's just like um, you know, Dell and HP is finding that PC 
margins are very thin. Mm -hmm. and, and that's just you know, that, that issue. So this is why when I came in, the, the, the advantage I have is I don't have any emotional baggage, so to speak. I, I, I don't have this thing that I got to have the coolest phone that is better than so-and-so. Um, I, I need to focus on how do you really highlight the assets of the company and what the market really needs in the future that could give you good growth and good valuation for our shareholders. That's what I focus on. I don't focus on, I love phones. I love phones. I equally love making money. So. <laughs> um, well, about the phones, are they, uh, so, so the, the, the first two that were your babies, right, were the Passport and the, and the new Classic, right? Those you had input on, right? Um, are you hoping to keep alive the BlackBerry fans worldwide, or are you actually expecting that they will bring in new customers? I'm hoping they bring, bring me new customers. Really? The first thing we're going to do is to stabilize my base. The base were leaking, they're going away. Um, most people think um, BlackBerry phone was kind of old, tired, not sexy. I actually don't know what that word means, but. Um, <laughs> and, and, I mean, I don't know how you take a look at a phone and say it's called a sexy phone. <laughs> Maybe you guys could help me design that one. Uh, but, uh, uh, but, but it was not that. Um, I need to change that, that conversation. Right? It is about a productive phone. I mean, it has the best uh, connectivities. It has best, you know, I mean, we, don't, we don't have messages like you have an email but haven't been downloaded from the server yet. Oh, you know, I hate that. I don't need those messages. We don't see it at BlackBerry. <laughs> Because, I mean, I wanted to make sure it's very secure, very private, um, and long battery. You don't need to, you know, first thing you walk in the room and find where the plugs are. Uh, we don't need to do that. I was the one who said war huggers for some, you know. Um, so, uh, you know, the keyboards, I, I, you know, it's it, the shortcuts on the keyboards, the, the software cut and paste and all that. It just helps you to be more productive. And, it, and, and what I like to change the equation to is this is a serious productive tool. Now, when you want to connect your phones to your car, to your home, to your work, uh, and, and even to the electronic locks at your door at your home, uh, you will need some serious stuff. And so um, and that's what I'm hoping for. If the market accept that message, I expect to see growth. Um, and it may be growing in the medical field, and maybe growing in the financial fields. Um, we certainly do very well in the government sectors, and, and so. The president it, carries a, a BlackBerry, does he not? Yeah, the president has a BlackBerry. Yeah. Um, um, you, know, uh, uh, you know, so is the prime minister of UK, um, chancellors of Germany, the parliament of Germany, India PM, and, so yes, uh, you know, heads of state use this BlackBerry. You know, not because they don't want to be cool, it's because this is the most secure phone. So, I mean, clearly RIM and now BlackBerry has this reputation for security, and you're, you're saying that. You're saying that's why this company makes sense for Internet of Things software, for car software, for medical software. Um, you're, aren't you kind of sticking your neck way out saying, look how secure, I mean, one hack. Oh, to yeah. this stuff, and, and you're done, right? Yeah, um, it's true. Does it keep you awake at night? Um, you, well, it's always a danger, um, you know, and that's why I normally don't publicly state, you know, how secure and all this stuff. But it is something that our customer wants from us, the market needs. Uh, you know, this is like one of those uh, uh, situation that you know, it's a, it's kind of a cat and mouse game on a continuous basis. Mm. And so the question is, we, we chose to enter into that game. Mm -hmm. um, and no, I, I mean, I don't get kept, kept away because I think we won't be hacked. Um, I'm sure that people are, have been trying. Right? After I made a statement for a year, people would be say, oh, really? <laughs> right. I, uh, I'm sure they'll be trying. So far, knock on wood or touch wood that they haven't been as successful or as, as others. Um, and so um, I, you know, not awake, but extremely well aware, and I am concerned. So we're gonna have to stay ahead of the game. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, so I was reading online some forums about <clears throat> what the like the CrackBerry forums and so on, and see what they're thinking of your job, your job so far. And there's really only one disgruntled person there, and he was <laughs> saying, 
you killed off some music feature? What, what was that? He, he said you're trying to deconsumerize the BlackBerry. You're abandoning the consumers in this zeal to focus on business. Is that accurate? The consumer lives. Well, um, uh, let me maybe uh, talk to this whole music thing a little bit. Um, you know, I'm a true believer that pick a few things you do and do it well. Um, it, it, the, the issue is if I do everything, I'm going to do a, you know, half jobs and everything. Um, eventually, I'm going to lose the loyalist and the people that support us. Um, let's just, you know, Let's just not try to be everything to everybody. Uh, we, we, we're not in a position to be. Now, one of these days, we might be. Uh, so I'm not like saying this on a forever basis. But for, for us right now, serious computing or serious mobile computing is the most important thing. So between now and the next five years, I think we're very much focused on that. Um, and as I said, the consumer, we're hoping the consumer will be attracted to us only because that this is the most productive, most secure device. Not so much that, wow, look at the music. Right? Now, that said, we're using a lot of the latest features on cameras, on pics, you know, you know we have one of the highest pixel phone in, in, uh, in, um, you know, that's available today uh, in Passport. Um, so we're, we're, not, we're not intentionally dropping it, but we're not gonna chase it, okay? Music is not our expertise. We partner with somebody, but we actually spend a lot of money in there. It's not money that we could recover um, for my shareholder, for that matter. The question is, why are you spending money in this area? Is that everybody else clearly is equal or better than you, is probably better than equal. Mm -hmm. right? And let's not focus on a lot of different things. So yes, I'm sorry that this, this must be a music lover. <laughs> but, um, what, what was it that... You had ended. What no, we ended a, the, um, it, it, the equivalent of having, you know, kind of an iTunes, um, you know, for the music library, music store. I see. So, so, but it's still, I mean, you have access. You get, to, you get Pandora. Yeah, that's right. I mean, you still run all the Android apps, right? Yes. On the new, so yes. Can, uh, one other thing we've done was uh, we, 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 again, uh, this is interesting. Um, the philosophy was let's not do something that other people have done well and focus it on. And, and let's see what we could partner with. So one of the early people that we could partner with was, was Amazon. Um, and Amazon had an app store, so it was an Android app store. Uh, so we signed an agreement with them that you know, we were able to run all the Android apps on the on Amazon app stores. And so what we, that's why I'm, I'm a big fan of, I hope every day that Amazon does very well in phones. <laughs> <laughs> because, because how's that working out so far? Well, uh, <laughs> so I, don't, I don't know the answer. I'm not gonna say anything that anyone's not gonna send me an email. Uh, uh, but I, I am, I am. I'm a biggest cheerleader there because, see, I have selfish reasons for that. When he, then they're successful, they could get zillions of apps, and then I get the benefit <laughs> of the zillions of apps. So, so. Um, you have you turned around one major company with spectacular results. Um, you're turning around this one. Suppose you succeed. Are you? Suppose. Yeah. <laughs> well. But, yeah, that's true. That's a well, good uh, word. Let's right? rephrase it. Since you're obviously succeeding. No, 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 no. <laughs> I suppose a good word. That's that's what you. Right. Um, is this? Are, are you? Are you BlackBerry now and forever, or are you a turnaround artist? And once this company's in good shape, you'll find the next suffering company. Oh. Wow, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm, uh, that's a question of my age. <laughs> There's a lot of energy. You really, I mean, it, it's hard work. So you don't have that picture of your career arc no. yet? You don't? No. So right now it's BlackBerry all the time. You're not thinking ahead. No, yeah, I'm BlackBerry all the way. All right, so we'll, uh, I'll, I'll offer you the chance to ask some questions, but, but while you think that up, um, I'll give you, John, one last chance to, um, to, to tell us in, if, if, in any numbers that you can pull out, where is BlackBerry now after your first 14 months? Um, give, us, give us some good numbers. Give us some numbers for hope. Size of the company, employees. Oh, OK, OK. Uh, we have roughly about 6,800 employees. Um, uh, and that's down from? Oh, that's down for a lot. Probably okay. uh, 16,000, maybe, um, down for quite a bit. Gotcha. So you got rid of the deadwood. Oh, no, no. I couldn't say that. I'm going to get 10,000 people trying to kill me if I say yes. I mean, uh, you know, no way. No, these are, you know. Uh, but 
um, we really need to focus on things we do. For example, I'll give you an example there. Um, you know, I was meeting with our manufacturer, one of our manufacturers last night um, from Taiwan, and you know, we used to, when I first showed up, we have six surface mounted line, which is to people, layman, manufacturing line, mm -hmm. okay? And we're able to make a lot of phones every day ourselves. Um, in Cambridge, Ontario, not exactly the cheapest place to, to mm -hmm. build a factory, but we had it. Um, and they are state-of-the-art line. We spent a lot of money in supporting that line. Um, and, but we don't do any better, we don't do worse, but we don't do any better than, in, than other manufacturers like in Taiwan, um, or in some of them in China or in Mexico. So we shut off all the lines. I mean, but save us a lot of money. But unfortunately, that decision, or the right decision, um, affected some of our, all our manufacturing employees. So, so that's how you keep, keep, keep uh, the numbers. So that's that. I'll give you one, a uh, couple of data points um, that I feel pretty proud of, I would say. Uh, the quarter I came in, we burned 1.1 billion in cash. One quarter, we spent 1.1 billion. I guess we spend 1.1 billion dollar more in cash than we take in. Oh, okay. So I don't know any company that could sustain that that number. Um, so the second quarter it went down to 775 million. The third quarter went down to 255 million. The quarter we just reported, we made 46 million in cash. Come on, right, dude, so this you are is, good. This is, this is public documents, so, <laughs> so, so that's why we're, you know, um, that's, that's, you know, part of the thing that we've done well, I think, as a team. Uh, we lost a lot of money. I forgot how much money we lost per share in the dollars um, per share. Um, last quarter, for the first time in, in, I guess, almost three years or something, uh, we made one penny. One penny, I know it's not a lot, but it's, <laughs> The colors changed, you know, from yes. red to white, uh, to black. <laughs> so, um, so those are, uh, you know, those are the things uh, that we've done. I, I think uh, we're, we're now getting to the point that we, we're lean enough. The question is, are we mean enough, right? Are we lean enough and now focusing on growth? Uh, we have a lot of work to do, by the way, so that I don't want to give anybody a bad impression like this is done. It's mm -hmm. not done. Um, now it's time for us to work the distribution channel. For example, uh, just up a few weeks ago, for example, uh, there's no North American carriers carry any of our phones in a retail store. So you could go into a retail store and then you say, I want to buy a Blackberry. They will talk you into buying a Samsung oh, S5 or an or a iPhone. Okay, and then you will, they will shame you from even wanting a Blackberry. Good news was a couple of months, a weeks ago, um, all the Canada carriers are carrying our classic device in their stores. So Talos, Bell, and uh, Rogers. And this morning. And this morning, AT&T announced they will carry both the passports as well as the classic in their store very soon. Um, and they even released the pricing, uh, the, the dollar. So this is a sea change. I mean, for us in the last couple of two, three years, that's, a, that's, a, that's almost a 180 degree change. Um, I could tell you that as we travel around the world, more and more carrier is coming back to the same thing. So there's hope. So yeah. I would just only say, and in addition to that, I'm, I'm trying to convince the carrier to carry and sell our software. One of the advantage of, of BlackBerry people doesn't know much about is that we actually have a direct connect and billings um, with about 600 carriers around the world. So if you, if you as a carrier was said, oh, I'm gonna resell your software to a, either a consumer or a prosumer or an enterprise, you could actually put it on the phone bill. You don't have to send me a check or pay me an invoice or, I mean, or, 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 or a PO or something. You, you actually could put it on your phone bill that you have with the phone company. Now the good news there is the phone company also benefit from that. So I'm hoping to use that m method called the, um, you know, sim based billing to get the carrier working more closely with us in software selling. So there are things, and again, I just want to caution everybody, by no means it's done, but there's a path. Right, and how long is that path? Are you able to? I will, I will probably take a year to get that path realized into the top line growth. Wow, and, and by the way, what, what does it depend on to get your phones into the carriers? Do you? Do you pay them? Do you give them a certain percentage? Do they give you a percentage? What, what, 
what can you do to persuade Verizon or whoever? Well, first you have to have a phone that, in their minds, is competitive. Okay. Uh, so the product design is the paramount one. Then, then it's about the financials uh, behind it. Right? Um, in the past, our financials, I, in my mind, was not really beneficial to us when the counts goes down. So the fixed costs are too high. I see. Um, we, have, we have fixed a lot of them. Right? And oh, by the way, I, you know, as also a, a, a kudos, a credit, a lot of these phones company really would like to see the duopoly to be more choices. And so um, AT&T a year ago had stated publicly that they will help us, they will support our turnaround. A year has gone by, same venue, we're announcing the availability of the phone. So obviously the year has not been you know, without work. I mean, it's been very, very uh, long uh, hard work uh, that both teams have put in. There's a bunch of other announcements you made this morning. Are, are any of those worth mentioning here? Oh, yeah. That's actually, for me, <laughs> um, we, we, we talk about the Internet of Things. We release our cloud. We talk about the medical thing. We talk about 50 million cars. This is our software in the connected cars. I think those, in my mind, are, are equally as big a news as AT&T carry the phone. But the AT&T carry, well, first of all, we're in the electronic show. Right? So everybody loves phones. They could see that. They could touch it. They could count it. Um, um, but I would not underestimate the whole, our whole movement on IoT, because if you go to it, like Samsung a couple of days ago announced their IoT strategy here, right? AT&T announcing their IoT strategy, Intel and Qualcomm, you could go to all the booths, they're all talking about IoT. So IoT is really an important thing. The question really is, how do you play in it, and how do you make money? Hmm. And when are you gonna make money? Mm -hmm. So we're, we're answering those questions this morning. And what is it? What does this IoT BlackBerry software do? Is it something the consumer will see, or is it behind the scenes stuff? A little bit more behind the scene. Um, we have a server that manages these endpoints, whether it is a phone or other things, or medical devices, things that connect it to your house, you know, a washer and dryers and everything else that people put in an IP. And, and then it will create the secure interfaces of this, right? That's what we do. We will have application in the medical world, in the, tr in, in the assets tracking world, and so forth. We already have application in the car world. So those will be revenue items to us. Um, so the consumer does see it. If, you're, if you jump into a car that uses our software, it has some very unique features on that. Um, and it will connect it to the cloud, and then you'll be, your car basically could be just a, a moving home. Mm -hmm. space. Um, and you can hit the space bar twice to get a period. <laughs> That's something. Like that. Thank you. I'll be here till Thursday. Maybe. Uh, so um, yesterday, I mean today, if you go to our booth and you will see how we demonstrate the security of the of the, of the vehicle uh, using our software. Um, so a lot of good stuff in there. But but those you could we could generate revenue um, from. So excellent. Um, any questions that you might have for John Chen? Yes. Microphone on its way. Hi, thank you. First of all, really interesting to hear all the things that you're doing so far. And I mean, I think most of us think of the device world. So that, that's sort of where my question is um, around. As you think about how fickle consumers are, um, how can you speak at all about your plan or strategy of how to connect with the consumer to change the perception of the consumer around um, towards BlackBerry? The question is regarding the, because it's very hard to hear acoustically. Uh, the, the question is regarding Actually, if you speak with Delta, the microphone. Yeah, so you hear, no, the question is just really, you know, a lot of what you talked about today in those four buckets is not about devices. And as consumers, the perception really of BlackBerry is about devices. So can you talk at all about your strategy and, you know, the, the fickle consumer and how you actually think about connecting with them and changing the perception of consumers with BlackBerry? Um, so uh, right now, our focus is on professional. So I, I use that word so that um, it is consumer, but a consumer with a special needs. The needs of, uh, I talk about security a lot, the needs of productivity, um, reliability, and the connectivity. Those are the needs. Um, or, or something that, um, you know, long power, uh, you know, battery life, and so forth. So that you, you, whenever you want to have the interaction through the device and communication, you have it. We, we focus a lot on software about how you balance between your work and your life, 
um, there is a lot of software that's going to come out. For example, there, there is one software, it's called a soft sim, that probably going to come out in about June time frame. Um, and it, it runs on, now this particular one runs on BlackBerry and Android and iPhone. Um, and it's a, a one sim with two numbers. And, 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 but that's no big deal because, uh, you know, multi-number sims have been around for five years. But the difference is um, one number are control and pay for, or pay for is up to you, but a control and bill separately um, could be your work life, meaning that your, your, your IT department will be able to manage what you get downloaded, give you the proxy, give you the access rights, and you know, single sign on to every application you have. So it's your work life, so you, you're working that. Um, the other part is a number that is a personal number. The IT department of your company will not be able to see it. So you protect your privacy. You know, and on, in addition to that, when I move on from my job, I keep that number. This is a major, major thing, because that's why a lot of people keep two phones in, around the world, for a whole host of reasons. Right? One of the reasons was that they want their personal life not be visible to the IT department. And oh, by the way, when those people move on to another job, um, when they return the phone to the company, they still kept their home phone number, so friends and family could so find them. So those are, you know, so we, we spent a lot of time designing both our software and our investment and our hardware in how do we make somebody more productive and how do we make, make somebody more, had a much more ability to, pro, to privatize their own life when they do need to. So, but it's focused on cons, uh, the professional consumer. So I call it, we call it the prosumer. That's what, we, uh, that, that's what we're focusing on right now. But the actual, like, you know, my 17-year-old, I couldn't care less if she buy one off home. <laughs> um, and you already have the OS. I, sh I shouldn't say that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I apologize for that. But I, of course I care. I care with it. But. And already uh, the operating system lets you divide your work and personal lives in terms of the apps and the wallpaper. Right. We, we, have, um, we have two petitions in our phones already, on our BlackBerry 10, for that reason. Now we added the two, you know, but those are data petitions. So we will not let application that downloaded on one side goes to the other, for example. But, um, but now we're gonna add the voice component of that, and the taxing part of it. Excellent. Anything else for John? Yes? Can, and just for the sake of the video, can you repeat the question before you answer it? Could I repeat the question? Oh, uh, <laughs> yes. Would, would I, 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 have the, I have a perfect answer for that moment. Now I missed it. Um, <laughs> oh, so, sorry. Um, but, uh, yes, yeah, so, so there was a very famous um, hacking of... Um, Jennifer Lawrence. Uh, yeah, iCloud, <laughs> I suppose. I suppose. Um, iCloud on um, celebrities that have taken pictures of themselves. Um, and the question is, if they use, if they have been using BlackBerry, uh, will they, will those pictures got hacked and leaked out? Uh, um, I suppose um, anything is possible, but the answer is no. Um, you know, I, I don't want to go into the detail technically of how it was, it happened. Um, but the way we encrypt it, the way we transport, and we run our own private network, uh, it's, it's, it's not possible. Um, so well, that, that, except so, so don't, don't take, so, so don't, don't take your own pictures on. <laughs> uh, but anyway, go ahead. But, but wasn't, it a, wasn't it a social engineering thing where the hackers guessed the password? I mean, nothing is, is invulnerable from that, right? Well, um, the way that the, um, the iCloud Interact um, open up an interface. Um, yes, that allow people to be able to get the, the, the password. Got you. 
All right, well, John, thank you so much, not only for joining us today, but for everything you're doing for the company and for BlackBerry and BlackBerry fans. As someone who thinks that choice and competition are important for all of us, I wish you the best success. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much, John. Thank you.